hello welcome to the next session of this course system will log verification learning more test function constructs in this session you will be learning more about cloaking blocks a cloaking block is a mechanism to synchronize the sampling and driving of input and output signals with respect to a clock event so it will be quite useful to use cloaking blocks in a test bench to avoid race conditions in the simulation so that assembles a clocking block in system will log assembles signals synchronous to a particular clock and makes their timing explicit and before going into the details of implementation we will just jump into an example and see how we can implement a clocking block so that it will be more clear with the practical usage of uh, the clocking blocks so this is a simplified syntax of clocking blocks or defining a clocking block so you use the keyword clocking and end clocking and you will use a name to identify this clocking block so in this example it uh, you can give any name and followed by uh, at the right symbol you will give the clocking event and next uh, you will if you wanted to define default skew to this input and output arguments you can define here with a default constructs otherwise you can uh, omit this and you can directly define the explicit uh, signals clocking uh, skews like input skew and output skew so let's see an example here i have defined a clocking block with name drv underscore cb so it, it, it it's a driver clocking block so it is sensitive to the positive edge of clock so this is a synchronization event a positive edge of this clk signal is a synchronization event for this clocking block and in this example instead of defining individual skews i have defined the default skew for all the inputs and output here so i am defining default input skew as input hash one step and output hash zero step so we will see what is the meaning of this hash one step and hash zero in the next slide but this is how you define a skew for the input and output variables if you are not defining this way, uh, uh, default clocking skew here you can explicitly define along with this input variable declaration and output variable declaration it is possible to define uh, declare different skews for different uh, input and output variables as well and also remember that it is illegal to uh, write any input clocking variable and it is illegal to read from any output clocking variable so what does it means is if you are using a signal with respect to a clocking block uh, that can be used any input signal can only be used for reading and any output signal can only be used for driving so you can use the signal within uh, within a clocking you can access the signal within a clocking block uh, with the name of the clocking block it's dot signal name so in this example if you wanted to assign say um, a w violet as one you will be doing it like drv underscore cb dot a w violet equal to one something like that next we will see how to specify clock skews and here the skew means it's a skew in the simulation and it is not the actual uh, clock skew with respect to a hardware signal so this is purely in, con in in terms of a simulation event so the input skew is the time before the signal is sampled uh, before the clock uh, the clocking event and the output skew is the time after the clocking event when the signal is driven so input skews are implicitly negative that is they are always referred to a time before the clock so let's look at an example here so if you're defining default input skew as input hash 5 it means the input values whatever be the input values in this clocking block when when they are read the value should be used at a point where which is five uh, time step before the clocking event so this will be a five 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 time step so uh, time steps so or time units uh, is uh, the basic time unit you can specify the simulation control um, so if, if it is one nanosecond so in this example it would be five nanosecond where the value of this input signal will be five the value of uh, it before five nanosecond of this positive edge of this clock and in the same way default output skews are always uh, referred uh, a time which is after the clocking events therefore so this is output skew so if you're defining an out output skew like hard six this will be after six time units after the positive edge of this clock but quite often you will never specify this input and output skews with respect to a number because you know this number is referring uh, to an explicit time unit uh, before and after and if you're changing your clock period and clock uh, clock uh, 
uh, frequency so this might be these values might not so need get changed therefore in most of the cases when you write very simple test punches you might need to specify only two kind of skews so in most of the cases you will be specifying the input skew as hash one step and the output skew as hash zero so note that it is not just hash one it is hash one step so there is a special meaning for this hash one step uh, with respect to or in the context of an input skew in a clocking block so a hash one step means it is a sampled value at the end of the previous time step postponed region or it is a sampled value at the preponed region of this uh, current current clocking event therefore it will be always a stable value which is derived after uh, the previous clock so and in the same way a explicit hard zero delay a hard zero skew in the output means no skew at all so it means all the driving of this variable will be taking place at the uh, re nba region of this current time step so if you are not very comfortable with the uh, system value timing region at this point you can ignore it but just understand that if you are using a clocking block like this with the default uh, or in input hash one step and output hash zero note that there is no steps after this output hash zero um, it means you will always get a stable value of all the inputs from the previous time slot and all output with a uh, hash zero delay hash zero skew will be driven at a stable point in the current time slot Now, here are some more points about clocking blocks. So you can define a clocking block uh, only inside a module, interface, or checker or program. So checker is an explicit system with a keyword to abstract a number of assertions you can ignore at this point in time. And a program block is again a special kind of test bench uh, construct where you can define your functionalities. So you'll be allowed to define a clocking block only in any of these a module a interface checker or program but most commonly they are used and defined exclusively into an interface uh, which will be widely used to drive signal from the test bench and to monitor signals from the dut and in the clocking block if you wanted to wait for a clocking event uh, within a clocking block you can just um, specify the clocking block name uh, and uh, the clocking block name itself will serve as an event so if you're defining as a clocking block like cb with name cb which is sensitive to the positive edge of clock and if you are uh, if you are wanted to wait for an event like at positive positive edge of clock it would be equivalent to use just at cb so you might see this at quite common in the, in the test benches where clocking blocks is used and two more points about clocking block is if you wanted to define a default clocking block for all uh, all the signals in a in a specific hierarchy say in an in an interface or in a module somewhere like that then you can add a default keyword before defining the clocking block so uh, that clocking block uh, will be serve will be considered as the default clocking block until they are explicitly overridden somewhere else so at this point don't get confused about the default clocking skews so in the previous slide we have seen the default clocking skews for uh, defining uh, the default skews for input and input and output so this is different if you want me to make this clocking block itself as a default clocking block for every every variable in the scope we can add it and finally it is also possible to define a global clocking block which is applicable to the whole hierarchy by adding a global keyword before the clocking block, block, clocking block definition and it is widely used in uh, formal verification only just to summarize here you will see clocking blocks widely used in test bench in quality test benches and they will be quite often defined in an interface which you are going to see in the next lecture and uh, by default in most of the cases you will be defining the clocking skews as input as, as hash one step and output as hash zero